strangest thing. It's shorter than you think. No thing. Welcome all my old and new subscribers and my members and my moderators. I appreciate everything y'all do. This video is going to be um, me analyzing part one of the wells on Dr. Phil. Okay. And then we will analyze part two. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to say, um, I know this is that Dr. Phil does not know everything. Um, maybe he should have known more or done more research because um, we have observed the whales for, for the last almost five months um, and we've heard their story change a lot. Um, we've seen them change a lot. We see a lot of things they have not been truthful about, things they lied about, and it's very concerning. Now, as far as the show, part one. Um, so it was the behavior panel interview that Candace walked out on. And she walked out on when they brought up the cornbread mafia. Now, the behavior panel observed that that's when she got most emotional. So when she was asked about that in part two, she doesn't know what it is. She says she don't know what the cornbread mafia is. She don't even know what it is. She said it just sound bad and it bothered her. Um, there's deception there with Candace. Like, like everyone agreed, even Dr. Phil, that she's holding something back. We don't know if it's from guilt or knowledge or whatever. She's holding something back. Um, I believe that Candace can't sit through that knowing that they know the truth. I think that's what's eating at her. I don't think it was so much more the cornbread mafia, but I think it's when people bring up things that she knows for a fact aren't true, it bothers Candace. It triggers her. Because she knows that the cornbread mafia did not come to get Summer Will. So I think it eats at her that she has to sit there and she's listening to all these untruths. And she knows what, what pretty much happened. And she's holding back. So I believe that's what's really affecting and bothering her. I don't think it was per se the cornbread mafia when that was brought up. I don't think it was actually that. It was that it was just something outrageous that she know did not happen. And I think that's what was breaking her down. And she was like, I don't want to do this. I just want to go home. Now, one thing that Dr. Phil said that is true. Most people who have missing children, they want to do anything and everything to find their child. If they have to sit there every day and talk to someone, they're gonna do it no matter how hard it is. Candace cannot do that. She doesn't like to talk. She don't want nut she don't want to talk about someone. She don't wanna she don't want to say nothing. 
it's, it's hard getting anything from her. Then you have Don that loves the spotlight, that wants to just throw out all type of theories and anonyms and suggestions and possibilities, everything that he can, he wants to throw out there. So he loves the spotlight and he was so happy to make it on national news. Now, national news really didn't help him. He think it did, but it didn't help him. It did not help him. He really thought that this would make him look really good. And he carries so much more about what people think than his own daughter. And that's a red flag. It's a lot of red flags with Don. But in this particular Dr. Phil, you know, Dr. Phil had to tell him, pipe down. Let Candace talk. You can't talk for her. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's always been my question. Why are you doing all the talking and you allegedly wasn't even there? You weren't there. So why are you doing all the talking? Why are you trying to answer her questions that I'm asking her? Shut up, Don. Let her speak for herself. You scared she might slip up? I know. Because we know that it's likely y'all know something. Y'all know. Another thing on part one that Behavior Panel and Dr. Phil brought up was Don being asked, has he questioned Candace? Then he says yes twice and four no's. He was stuttering, stammering his words. They said he was overthinking. His blink rate was 70, 80 miles. Minutes. So his blink rate was at the roof. There is deception there to me. He's thinking of something. He's trying to think of something quick because he's lying like Don always does. He always lies. He lies, 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 lies. So they caught him up in that lie. He's holding back too. He knows what Candace knows. And he's withholding that information just like Candace. And people have to remember that it was possible that Don came home from work early. And Dr. Phil said some things that I did not agree with. Um, now, he did say the timeline does not add up. And it doesn't. It never has added up. And he don't think that they did anything. I don't agree with that. The reason why he said he don't think so is because they didn't have enough time to get rid of Summer. I disagree with that. If Don came home earlier and she called him and they knew that they had to get rid of this child, there are places they could have dropped her off at and had time to come back and call 911. So that's what I disagree with Dr. Phil on because... There was plenty of time. Don keeps yelling 5.30, 5.30. Because I believe he came home earlier. And whatever the situation was with, with Summer, they had plenty of time, if they did something, they had plenty of time to get rid of the body and call 911 at 6.24. Plenty of time. That's why I said Dr. Phil needs to know more about this case and more about the situation because if he knew that all the inconsistencies, then he he's right on the timeline. It doesn't make sense. But that's why it doesn't make sense for a stranger abduction in those two to five minutes. The two to five minutes, it does not make sense about the stranger abduction. Now, two more things I want to address with Dr. Phil. 
He said, with behavior panel, Candace is not the type of mother that is attentive to her children. So he says he do not believe that he, she checked up on Summer in two to five minutes. He don't believe that she asked the boys to watch her. He does not believe that she went down there and yelled for her in those two to five minutes. And I agree with him. She's the, the kids were likely neglecting and abused from what we witnessed. Now, they was likely outside by themselves a lot of the time for long periods of time. Just by him observing, he observed that Candace is not an attentive mother. And that that time frame, it's two to five minutes, is likely not true. Candace likely stayed outside or left or did whatever longer time than that. Then finally thought to check up on Summer. And then she was missing. But the two to five minutes, that's not true. And that goes to who she is. She's not that attentive mom. He doesn't believe she asked the boys to watch her. He does not believe that she checked on her in five minutes. And I agree. We know by what we observed these last five months that Candace is not an attentive mother. Neither is Don. These kids fend for themselves. They go outside by themselves for long periods of time. They're on their own majority of the time. And that's a problem. That's, a, that's why we're here right now with a missing child and three kids in CPS custody because of abuse, neglect, and how they're living. Now, let's go on to the last part I want to discuss in part one. Dr. Phil said Candace denied the cameras to film their house. And she denied it the top be filmed at all. Then she changed her mind about the bottom of the house of them looking into her room. But she said you will have to wait and come back after we clean it. So the room that Dr. Phil filmed in Summerwell's house in that basement was completely redone. That was not the room we saw in Chris McDonough's video. She basically had no room. It was like a jail cell. It was a house of horror dungeon, okay? All it was missing was a toilet. That's how bad her room looked. Now, they lied, they fixed it up, for the cameras, because all of this is for show with the wells, okay? This is all for show. None of this is, is, is really them or sincere. None of this, this is for show, for cameras. So they won't get talked about. But see, y'all fucked up because we already know how the house really looked when you let Chris McDonough in there. So we know how it really looked. So you can't fake the phone for the cameras. So they redid her room. And they showed that made up room, redone room that Summer never got a chance to enjoy. Summer never got a chance to enjoy that new, improved, clean room. This was done after she went missing. No one cared to fix up her room before. But you did this after for Dr. Phil, for the world. This isn't about Summer to them. But anyway, we saw that made up room that Summer was never in. We don't know what that is, but that's what they made up and cleaned up and did for her after she's been missing. She's never in, had a clean room. She's never had her room look like that ever. And I hope one day she'll be able to enjoy a nice, clean, kept room. Now, P 
peep what Dr. Phil did. He said, okay, you don't want to give me permission for the cameras? Cool. He asked Chris McDonald for permission and used his videos that he, his footage he got of the Wells home. And they showed what the house really looked like. Dr. Phil aired that house on how it really looked outside, inside, top, and bottom. Dr. Phil aired Chris McDonough, shout out to you, the real footage. Not the footage that she didn't want them to see because she didn't get the permission to, to do the front. She only gave the permission for Summer's redid room. She refused to let Dr. Phil see anything else but the redone room of Summer's after it was cleaned up. But he used footage of, of Chris McDonald's and he showed everything to the national news. Everyone in the world got to see that house of horrors outside, inside, clutter where that baby room went down at. And you can tell that that room does not match that house. The redid room does not match how that house really looked. And Dr. Phil said, he used the word clutter. It was cluttered up there. So how would the boys have heard anything if she's down there, the basement's down there, they're upstairs, and the house was cluttered? He used the word cluttered. And I think he was trying to be nice when he used the word cluttered. But see, they can't hide what your house look like. You can't put on a fake front and a fake show because Dr. Phil used the real footage of how horrible your house really looked, how you had those kids really living. He used that on his show. So the people get to see how y'all was really having those kids living before she went missing. So it don't matter, Candace, that you denied it. He used Chris McDonough's footage. And the world got to see the real inside of that house. And once again, the road, you cannot see the house from the road. And you want people to believe someone came through that woods. How would they have known that she would have been outside? They wouldn't know. They wouldn't know. That's the answer. Like Dr. Phil said, how would they know she would have been outside? The answer is they wouldn't know. They wouldn't. All right, you guys. This is my pretty much the end of the part one. I will be back with the part two. Y'all like, share, subscribe, comment down below if you have anything you want to say. I will end with this. Don and Candace knows where summer is and we want her we want her home we want her home so all these made up stories and this abduction theory just just stop it already just stop it already there's no stranger that came up there and got that baby no and y'all timeline does not fit. And that's why you're still a suspect in Tennessee. Y'all two are still suspects. It doesn't matter what Dr. Phil say. It don't matter what he thinks. He's just a person in the public eye. What matters is what law enforcement think and what they're doing. And they have a lot of the evidence and they believe that y'all are suspects, and I believe y'all are suspects. And that timeline is not real. That timeline is fake. Y'all are lying about the timeline. Your girl Queen checking out, peace.